behind the door. Does that controversial church really practice mind control? in Prescott, Arizona, and now spread all over the world. The sometimes controversial or unconventional ministry has always been a source of controversy, and now it's under national scrutiny for allegations of mind control. All this week, Sandy Rathman is looking into those charges as she takes us behind the door. Some say the Door Church is a case of religion gone wrong. The fundamentalist church is charged with brainwashing its members, exercising virtually unlimited control over their thoughts and lives. The controversy started when talk show host Geraldo Rivera attacked the door on national TV. This Phoenix woman charged the door had brainwashed her. This religious to programmer charged the door has characteristics of a cult. Are you Miss Christensen? And since they appeared on Geraldo, Debbie Christensen and Rick Ross have repeated their charges across Arizona, even debating them with door members outside a recent Phoenix crusade. How come you're asking her to consider leaving a church where she's happy? Why are you suddenly interfering with her life? You have a ministry that tends to paint the world as a we-them kind of world where we're the good guys because we're in the door and everyone else is really kind of a backslider, a lukewarm Christian, or just damned or under satanic influence. Groups like the door will even say that if you uh, think or evaluate our doctrine and you have doubts about doctrine, it really isn't you thinking. It's the devil attacking your Rick mind. Rick Ross claims he knows more about the Door Church than any other religious to programmer in the country. After counseling a handful of former Door members, some from Tucson. I would characterize them that, uh, of, uh, as a group of people who are not thinking for themselves. And I talk to Door members, I frequently hear the same catchphrases, the same verbiage. It just seems like uh, some cassette tape playing over and over again. Debbie Christensen claims a Door church in El Paso told her who to date, what to listen to on the radio, and not to watch TV. We were zombies for Christ. Uh, we did anything and everything they told us to do. We really did not have a mind of our own. Debbie says she joined after going to just one service. I was on drugs. I was abused. Uh, got, I had gotten myself into devil worshiping, all sorts of things. And the church came to me and told me that Jesus could give me a better life. And Debbie's life did improve. But she also charges the door turned her against her family because they didn't belong to the church. And I even went so far to tell my mom she was going to hell. Eventually she quit after she says her pastor covered up her rape by another church member. A charge the pastor strongly denies. He just told me it was my fault. If I told anybody, I would be kicked out of the church. And I didn't tell anybody because they told you if you left the church, you were going to hell. The founder of the Door Churches, Wayman Mitchell, decries all the allegations as lies. Debbie Christensen, uh, if her story is correct, uh, all she has to do is go to the officials and file a charge. The fact that she doesn't leads many of us to believe that the story isn't true. So your whole thing has been orchestrated by Mr. Rick Ross. He is an anti Christian reformed Jew. That's what his problem is. He has a second issue of uh, Mr. Ross, and that is that he's a uh, highly paid religious mercenary. No, we're not a cult. We don't brainwash anybody. These people are free to do whatever they want to do. They run their own lives. They make their own decisions. Tucson Door Pastor Harold Warner reacted to the charges by putting an ad in the newspaper and inviting people to come hear the truth. The Bible says all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. On a recent Sunday, Warner preached that reproach always has been one of the occupational hazards of being a Christian. And he yelled and laughed about the allegations. Probably the most prominent being that you folks are brainwashed. Our friend Rick Ross and Geraldo's television program at the end when asked, you know, what are the signs that you look for? <laughs> he said, one, any radical change of behavior. Now, I would have liked to ask, now, Rick, do you mean when people stop using drugs? You mean when they quit cussing? That does sound a little bit like being saved. So there are strong attacks and counterattacks. 
Now, a few days ago, an Arizona-based private investigator called me to warn me about religious to programmer Rick Ross. I'd been told that the church had hired a private investigator to look into Ross's allegations, his background, and credentials. But the investigator, Rick Smith, denies he was hired by the church. Smith says his client is a New Hampshire man. Smith says he's shown all of Ross's allegations are untrue. He also says Ross has a criminal background that calls into question his mental stability. Now, because he works undercover, Smith asked us not to show his face. Shows that in 1974, Mr. Ross was involved in a uh, conspiracy situation to burglarize a um, homestead situation, a um, uh, project of homes. The second case in 75, uh, that was finalized in early 76, he was part of a, a plan that, uh, according to his own self-admission, manifested a jewelry theft in the Valley of Phoenix, uh, $50,000 wholesale, $100,000 retail. Rick Ross admits he committed both crimes. I made a lot of mistakes when I was a kid, Ross said. I paid for what I did. Ross calls his investigation mudslinging and muckraking. Quoting him, it tells me they feel there is no way to respond to the issues I've raised, so they're trying to divert attention to me personally. What they've done is proven to me beyond a shadow of a doubt they are a destructive group. It shows they're not about the Bible. I did what the Bible says to about sin. I gave back what was taken. I repented and came before the court system and took my punishment. Now, Ross says he used what he learned from his criminal past to start a prison ministry for other troubled kids. His religious to programming resume includes recommendations from professionals all over the country. And so what do you have for us tomorrow? Tomorrow night we're going to talk to two different families about very different experiences in the Door Church. Thanks very much.